in today's video we are going to be talking about information. So firstly, what is information? Information is the process by which your body fights against things that are trying to harm it. So things like injuries, um, infections, toxins, bacteria, viruses. Um, your body has this natural process which causes inflammation where your body tries to fight the source of harm that is coming into your body. But the problem is, is that there's a lot of conditions out there um, such as cancer, arthritis, diabetes, there's a lot more and that often causes chronic inflammation which is when you have inflammation for weeks, months or even years after that initial trigger. So, on the other hand, there's something called acute inflammation, which I have actually recently experienced myself, and that's what prompted me to create this video. So, a couple of weeks back, I had a really inflamed knee. It was really swollen, and I later realized that it was because I had done some high-intensity um, exercise a couple of days prior that I don't usually do. So, that additional strain on the joint caused some inflammation. Um, it was swollen for a few days, eventually did go down, but I had to rest it. Um, I had to use a compression bandage. And I also wanted to eat some anti-inflammatory foods to help boost my immune system and provide me with a speedy recovery. So a lot of people, if you have a condition such as cancer or arthritis or diabetes and you have experienced chronic inflammation, you will probably have read about anti-inflammatory foods and the fact that your diet can really impact the way that your body handles inflammation and there are certain foods which cause high levels of inflammation and certain foods which reduce inflammation or can help um, to fight inflammation better than certain foods. So I'll quickly just go into some of the um, <laughs> inflammatory foods that are recommended to avoid or just have in smaller amounts. So I'm not saying you have to cut out anything. Um, I don't believe in saying a food is good or bad, but there are certain nutritional aspects to food that shouldn't be ignored if you're trying to have an optimally healthy body. So yes, I don't like to label foods as good or bad. However, I do like to learn about and educate others about nutritional um, topics because it is true that some foods offer more nutritional value than others. So some things that can trigger inflammation, um, so which are best to have in smaller amounts or to avoid them if you are experiencing either acute or chronic inflammation, include refined carbohydrates. So things like refined breads, pastas, pastries, some cereals, um, cookies, cakes, etc. Um, or sugary drinks, basically any <laughs> super processed food that contains sugar and flour um, is going to be a source of refined carbohydrates. Please note that carbohydrates are not the enemy. High fiber carbohydrates like brown rice, oats, um, quinoa, like all the different grains are amazing for your body. It's important to note the difference between refined carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates such as brown rice, whole grains, etc. Um, the second thing that can trigger inflammation are vegetable and seed oils. So I'll link a video down below that I recently watched on seed oils and vegetable oils, which is very informative um, about the kind of rise of vegetable and seed oils because it was cheaper to produce and how that has negatively impacted our society's health. Um, there are certain oils out there which are very damaging to our cells and to our body and do cause a lot of inflammation. So it is important to do a bit of research on the oils that you use. Um, interestingly, there is one oil that's actually an anti-inflammatory um, ingredient, which is extra virgin olive oil. I'll touch on that later. Um, but yes, try to avoid some types of oils. I'll leave a link in the description box below so you can get more information because I'm not an expert on that topic. Um, but it is very interesting to know that some oils definitely do trigger inflammation. Another thing that causes inflammation in the body is refined sugar. So you'll probably know this already. Things like sugary soda drinks, um, processed lollies and um, snacks that have a lot of sugar in them, they are quite triggering. Um, of information in the body, so they are best to be had in a smaller quantity. So opting for naturally sweetened things, like things that are sweetened with dates, 
um, or banana or things like that is going to be a better option for you to still be able to eat sweet delicious foods um, but not have that inflammatory response happening in your body. Interestingly another thing that causes inflammation in the body is red meats and processed meats so um, things like burgers, hot dogs, um, all that kind of stuff like deli meats, they are not great for inflammation. Um, so if you are trying to reduce your inflammation, um, I would recommend to look into different types of meats and plant-based alternatives that you can use instead um, to still be able to get protein into your diet but having less inflammation in the body. Another thing that causes inflammation is alcohol. So, I mean, that's kind of a given. I think most people realize that alcohol is not amazing for you. Um, obviously, like all of these things, I still want to emphasize that you can enjoy them, um, but just maybe in smaller amounts and maybe just if you are in a really chronic inflammatory um, condition to avoid them just for a little bit while you can kind of reset your body and help your body to fight off that inflammation better. And the last thing that I wanted to mention today was artificial trans fats. So things like margarine and any processed foods that say they contain partially hydrogenated oils. They are not great for inflammation. And a lot of packets of things like chips, um, cookies, crackers, they will have partially hydrogenated oils on the packaging. Um, so have a look for that. It's not, yeah, not amazing for inflammation in the body. So that is something to look out for as well. All right, <laughs> I know this is going on for a while, but I'm just I'm really passionate about, you know, spreading the word about nutrition. And I actually am going to be creating a video shortly on diet culture um, and the difference between diet culture and eating for optimal health. And I think there's a really important distinction because I have been in the trenches of diet culture before. And I'll go into that in that video that I'm going to film in the next few weeks. Um, but yeah, there is a distinction between diet culture and eating for optimal nutrition and optimal health. Um, diet culture is more focused on being thin, being skinny, um, whereas optimal nutrition is focused on having a healthy body so that you can be your best self and you can function optimally um, for both your body as well as your mind. So that's what I'm interested in. When I talk about nutrition, that's what I'm interested in. So anyway, back to what I'm talking about. Um, so some foods that are recommended to include in your diet if you want to have a low inflammatory diet are things like vegetables, in particular cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts. Broccoli is rich in sulfurophane. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it is an antioxidant that fights inflammation by reducing your levels of cytokines, um, which drive inflammation. So all of the foods I'm going to mention now, they all have anti-inflammatory properties. I won't go into depth on each one, but I will leave some notes in the description box below if you want a bit more information. So other vegetables are capsicums, um, they are loaded with vitamin C as well as other anti-inflammatory um, nutrients. Things like mushrooms are amazing, um, tomatoes, leafy green vegetables. There are so many amazing vegetables that should be included in your diet on a regular basis. They help fight inflammation and they also just have so many micronutrients in them which are amazing for optimizing your health. So also turmeric, garlic and ginger are very, very important and should be in your diet on a regular basis. Um, there is this recipe that I, I think I posted a few times on my channel, but adding ginger into your stir fries, it just tastes so good and it's a great way to get some ginger into your diet if you're not a big fan of ginger because I know ginger and turmeric especially have quite strong flavors. So if you've never had them much before, um, I would recommend introducing them slowly. Turmeric, for example, is great to add into curries and turmeric, when you combine it with black pepper, that's the best way to get the anti-inflammatory effects of turmeric so adding turmeric into your curries is a great way to get it in and you will barely taste it because all the other curry flavors kind of mesh together and it tastes incredible um, so yeah if you don't like turmeric and ginger try ginger in a stir fry and turmeric in a curry and then garlic can just go in everything because garlic's amazing um, <laughs> the other things I wanted to mention are nuts so in particular almonds and walnuts have great anti-inflammatory properties 
Um, then on to some other kind of fats. So I mentioned extra virgin olive oil earlier. Um, it has very powerful anti-inflammatory properties. Um, avocados are amazing. If you don't like avocados, I would recommend adding them into some dressing so you can blend up a dressing and add some avocado into that. I will be showing you a delicious salad dressing in this video later on. It's coming shortly, guys. Don't stress. Um, I will leave the time codes down below if you just want to skip forward to the actual recipes. But I think this information is quite important, so I'm sharing it with you. Um, and then what else we have? Fatty fish. So I personally don't eat fish, um, but Fatty fish is a great source of omega-3 fatty acids, DHA and EPA, um, and your body metabolizes these fatty acids into compounds called resolvins and protectins, which have anti-inflammatory effects. Um, if you don't eat fish, you can also take a supplement. I know there are some algae-based DHA and EPA supplements out there. Um, I used to take one. I haven't taken one in a while, so I should probably get back on that. Um, but yes, they are very important and very they have very strong anti-inflammatory effects. So if you haven't looked into that yet, I recommend it. The next one I have are fruits. So in particular, berries are incredible. Strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, raspberries, they're all amazing. They have loads of antioxidants in them. Berries actually contain something called antho... Yeah, I can't say it. I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> and these compounds have an anti-inflammatory effect that may also reduce your risk of heart disease and other chronic diseases. So berries are great. Um, if you look at basically any book on health, uh, they'll probably tell you to eat more berries because berries are definitely um, an underrated superfood or I don't, know, I don't really believe in superfoods, but if there were superfoods, blueberries and berries in general would be one of them. Then finally, I have my favorite anti-inflammatory food, which is cocoa powder or dark chocolate. So of course, you don't want to be eating loads of milk chocolate because that has a lot of sugar, a lot of dairy in it as well. But dark chocolate, specifically 70% cocoa and plus, can be a really, really great addition to your diet. Um, one, it tastes amazing and leaves you feeling incredible. Um, but two, it has something called flavanols, I don't know if I'm saying that right again, I apologize. Um, but they are responsible for chocolate's anti-inflammatory effects and they keep the endothelial cells that line your arteries healthy. So very important. If you have a family history of heart disease, you really want to focus on keeping your body with low inflammation, um, not having too many high inflammation inflammatory foods and cocoa powder is great <laughs> to keep your arteries healthy so the trick really is to have either cocoa powder or dark chocolate so the greater percentage of cocoa in the chocolate the better so if you like the taste of 95% dark chocolate that's great I personally usually opt for 70% because I just think it tastes the best but I use cocoa powder more than I actually have dark chocolate. So I'd say I have probably two teaspoons of cocoa powder almost every day. Um, I do have a couple of recipes that I'll link down below and I'll link one in the top right corner um, of some delicious chocolate recipes. So things like brownies, I recently made these delicious zucchini brownies that had quite a bit of cocoa powder in there. Um, things like uh, chocolate pancakes you can add cocoa powder into um, I do have a recipe coming up in this video for some cocoa and cinnamon oats cinnamon also has powerful anti-inflammatory um, properties in it so you'll see that shortly all right <laughs> that is all of the information um, I'm going to go on to the actual recipes now if you've stayed this long thank you I appreciate it um, I hope this has been helpful to you in some way I will as I said earlier leave some links below to actual medical resources um, if you want some more in-depth um, information on this topic uh, but it is really interesting to know that some foods promote inflammation um, and some foods fight inflammation so yeah as I said before none of these foods are good or bad but they have different nutritional profiles that I think is very liberating to know about. Um, anyway, let's go on to the recipes. Today I have three delicious recipes for you to try. I hope you enjoy these and I'll see you on the other side. Bye. The first recipe we have today is some cacao cinnamon oats. So cinnamon is another spice that has very powerful anti-inflammatory effects. It's packed full of antioxidants and is a great spice to add into your diet. So firstly, we're starting off with some oats, some flax meal, some almond milk. Then I'm adding in two to three tablespoons of cocoa powder. The more you add in, the darker it's going to taste. I personally like it like tasting like dark chocolate, so that's why I add in three teaspoons. 
Then I'm adding in some cinnamon. Again, you can add in as little or as much as you like, but I've added in, I would say, about a third of a teaspoon there um, to give it a little bit of a cinnamon taste, but not too strong to overpower the cocoa. That is pretty much it for the oats. So now just put that onto the stove to cook on a medium heat for about three to five minutes. I have just washed and cut up some fresh strawberries. You can use whatever berries you would like, um, but I personally just like strawberries with this dish. And finally, we are adding in half of a banana into the oats for a bit of extra sweetness. So I like to mash up the banana and make sure to use a nice and ripe banana because the riper the banana is, the sweeter it's gonna taste um, and the better your oats are going to taste. So that is all, you just add that into the oats give it a good stir and that is it for this recipe super quick and easy it's a great breakfast to have pretty much every day i love having oats every day if you've watched some of my other videos you'll know that um, but i like to mix it up and this cocoa and cinnamon one is really delicious and i really hope you enjoy this recipe And on to recipe number two, which is an avocado and walnut salad. So firstly, start off with some dark leafy greens. You can use whatever greens you like. Personally, I usually use spinach, but I've also got some rocket here. And then we're adding in some walnuts. Walnuts are amazing for your body and for your mind. And then we're adding in some cabbage, which is a cruciferous vegetable, as well as some avocado. Now it's time to make the dressing. This dressing is incredible. I highly recommend trying it out. I've just put in two zucchinis, as well as one teaspoon of Dijon mustard and a lime. So you wanna juice the lime fully and it helps to just use a juicer rather than trying to squeeze it. And then add in two handfuls of fresh basil. This is what makes this dressing. It makes it kind of taste like pesto, which is delicious. Um, and then add in some olive oil. And then finally, to give it a little bit of sweetness, a medjool date. So I highly recommend adding that in because um, it does just kind of make the dressing taste slightly sweet, which is really, really good. I love slightly sweet dressings. And with the combination of the mustard, it's just incredible. I know it looks a bit like slime, um, but it tastes really, really good when it's mixed in with the salad. So yeah, you just put that into the salad, give it a good stir. And then finally, we're just going to top it off with some extra avocado and some hemp seeds. Um, that's completely optional. You could have just added in the avocado, all of it at the start, um, but I just thought it looked pretty. Um, so that is it for this salad. In terms of what you want to serve it with, today I just had it with a cooked sweet potato because I just wanted a light lunch. But if you wanted to make this into a proper meal, I'd recommend adding in some protein as well. Um, so you've got a fully balanced meal with all your carbs, proteins, and fats. But this sweet potato I just cooked in the oven at 200 degrees Celsius for an hour and then it becomes this really nice soft texture and I've just yes served it with the salad it was a delicious light lunch um, I'd had quite a big breakfast and a snack in the morning so yeah I just had a light lunch this day but if you wanted to make it a meal as I suggested add in a little bit of protein you could add in some beans um, some tofu um, whatever you want really and it's a great healthy meal packed with loads of antioxidants all right, so onto the final recipe today, I have this sunset smoothie. So it has a lot of ingredients you'd typically find in a juice, but it's blended into a smoothie. And that way you get all the fiber, all the nutrients from all the fruits. I hadn't really made a blended juice before, uh, but this turned out so well and I would highly recommend it because yes, you're getting in all that fiber, all the nutrients, um, and it tastes incredible. So as you can see, these are all the ingredients I've added in, but it is definitely customizable. You could add in more um, orange if you wanted it slightly more citrus in flavor you could add in more pineapple um, or whatever you'd like basically you can play around with it but I've added in a lot of anti-inflammatory ingredients into the smoothie and it actually tasted really good the turmeric does give it a slight little earthy flavor um, so maybe just add in a little bit less if you're new to turmeric but it tasted pretty good 
Alright guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and took some value from it. Please let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed seeing these recipes. I actually did come up with a few different anti-inflammatory recipes, so if you're interested, I can definitely make a part two of this video with some additional recipes. Um, yeah, let me know if you'd like to see that. I really hope you enjoyed this. If you are new here and you haven't already, it would mean the world to me if you could hit that subscribe button down below. We're getting really close to 2,500 subscribers and then I'm going to film a little special Q&A when that happens. So yeah, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next video, maybe part two if you want to see it. <laughs> see ya!